Hello guys and welcome to TGN the Game Nerd, the show where I talk about our play games and today we're going to be playing 9 Hours, 9 Persons, 9 Doors. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and searched everywhere for Snake but we couldn't find him so we just decided that we would have to leave without him. Ace made the sacrifice play and decided that he would stay behind in order to let everyone else go through. And in this episode, now we just have to decide what door we want to go through. So the door that I'll be choosing this time around is door number 7. Here's my reason for choosing this. So first of all, we're not going through door 3. Because in the last episode, uh, 7 decided that he was going through door 7 and Lotus was deciding that she was going to go through door 8. And since we're splitting into uh, two groups, that would mean that I would have to choose either 7 or 8. And I'm going through door number 7 for a couple of reasons. One of them being, and this is the reason that I went through door 7 in my first L in my uh, first playthrough of this game. Because Lotus seems a bit fishy and a bit weird right now. And she just doesn't seem as emotionally attached to everyone as we are. So I'm gonna stay away from her and plus that gives me a chance to uh, voice act 7 throughout this next uh, escape room, uh, which we haven't seen a lot of 7, so uh, this will give us a chance to get closer to him. Door 7. I... I think I'm gonna go with door 7. Okay, 7 it is. Yeah. Alright, then that means June's gotta go through door 8. What? Why? What? Santa grimaced and muttered angr angrily to himself, but finally began to explain. If six of us are going to keep going without leaving anyone behind, there's only three ways we can do it. Plan A. Go through 7 with 358, and go through 8 with 467. Plan B. Go through 7 with 457, and go through 8 with 368. Plan C. Go through 7 with 367, and go through 8 with 458. And that's it. Those are our only options. In other words, 3 and 4 and 7 and 8 can never go through the same doors. You get it now? As Santa finished, June looked over at Junpei, tears welling up in the corners of her eyes. Oh no! You're saying we aren't going to see each other again for a long time. Junpei felt just as June did. He wanted to be at her side through whatever trials they were preparing to face. But he knew if they were going to survive, he had to swallow his feelings. In order for the six of them to move forward, he and June had to be separated. He looked at June. He was scared to lose her, but he swallowed, steeled his resolve, and did his best to smile. Hey, come on, you're making it sound like we're never going to see each other again. We gotta split up, but only for a while. This is just like when we went through the four and five doors, remember? We got split up then too, but we all met back up. We get... I'll bet 7 and 8 are just like that. You mean, they're connected somewhere? Yeah, probably. Probably. She didn't sound very hopeful. It was 7 that interjected. I'm sure they're gonna connect somewhere. Why? What makes you think so? If they don't connect, neither team can get through door 9. In other words, the game would end right here. Zero's been on top of his shit so far. I don't think he'd blow it now. I'm damn sure that son of a bitch wants to have his fun as long as possible. He's not going to end this game until we get through the nine door. And June said nothing. The tears were gone, but were, her eyes were still sad as they looked at Junpei. He met them, and with what reassurance he could manage, laid his hand gently on her shoulder. Everything's going to be fine. We're going to see each other again. I promise. June bit her lip and gave him an, an almost imperceptible nod. Yes. Promise? Her voice was barely above a whisper. Santa's voice shattered the moment. Ugh, you guys are done, right? He stretched and continued. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Clover and I will both go th into separate groups. Figure I'll take eight and Clover can take seven. Any problems with that, Clover? Clover looked away and was silent for a moment. Whatever. It was more of a dismissal than an agreement, but Santa didn't seem to care. Alright, we're ready to go then. Let's move! At Santa's command, the group split and headed for their respective doors. Clover, Seven, and Junpei walked toward door Seven. 
Santa, Lotus, and June headed toward door eight. For a long moment, they stood in front of the door. Seven took a deep breath. Whew. You guys ready? Yeah. Yes. Okay, let's go. The door had opened. A narrow hallway stretched out before them. Seven and Clover leapt through the door. The moment they did, their bracelets beeped. The detonators in the bracelets had been activated. Junpei stepped forward to follow them. But as he was about to step over the threshold, he stopped. He looked to his right, toward door eight. June stood there, a mirror image of Junpei. She turned and looked toward him. Their eyes met. They nodded. Their farewell took almost 1.5 seconds. Then someone took hold of Junpei's arms and hauled him bodily through the door. He heard the sound of the numbered door slam shut behind him. His bracelet gave a cold electronic beep. Only 81 seconds left. No time to waste, guys. Let's get moving. Seven led the way down the hallway. Junpei and Clover followed him as fast as they could. After what seemed like far more than 81 seconds, they reached the end of the hall. To the left of a wooden door, they found the dead. There was no time to rest or catch their breath. All three slammed their hands in quick succession over the scanner panel of the dead. Still trying to catch his breath, Seven leaned heavily against the wall. It stopped. It stopped. <laughs> his smile seemed forced and a little crooked. This is the second time we've gone through one of these numbered doors, but uh, whew, you never really get used to it. He stood up straight, no longer out of breath, and wiped some of the sweat from his head and neck. Clover smirked at him. I would have thought a guy your size would have bigger balls than that. What? What the hell did you say? Say it again, I dare you. You have no... Y you little... You wanna die. I'd like to see you try. You fucking brat. Alright, let's go. Hey, hey, calm down, guys. This isn't the time for... Uh, this. It's not gonna do us any good. <laughs> ah. Gosh. Junpei sighed. Sometimes he wondered if the doors and the puzzles were really the greatest challenge they faced. Wait here for a minute, alright? I'm gonna go see if there are any other doors. They didn't respond, but Junpei wasn't in the mood for a conversation anyway. First, he examined the inner part of the numbered door. It was, of course, shut tight. On the left was a single short hallway that terminated almost immediately at a thick iron wall. Junpei doubted the wall could be moved. At last, he gave up and returned to Seven, who was tapping lightly on the wooden door. This door's the only option we got, right? Yeah, looks like it. There was a metal plaque bolted above the door. A red operating room. If it was to be believed, the room on the other side of the door was an operating room. Something about it made Junpei feel... nervous. Well, there's no point standing around. Might as well go in and see what's waiting for us. Seven grabbed the brass knob and slowly opened the door. The creak of the hinge sounded like the groan of an old woman. A chill snaked its way down Junpei's spine. Quickly, he gathered what courage he could and took his first step into the room. Seven followed, with Clover right behind him. Part of the room just past the door was obscured by a screen. Clover's curiosity got the better of her, and she darted past Junpei to peer around the screen. Ah! Her scream nearly blew out Junpei's eardrums. He and Seven ran toward Clover to see what, he had, what had frightened her. And they rounded the screen, and the cause of her outburst was immediately clear. Ooh, what the hell is this? Is, 
Is that a corpse? It was something that looked kind of like a human lying across some sort of bed. No, not a bed. An operating table. The table sat on a rusty steel lift, and a cluster of bright operating lights shone down on it from the ceiling. Slowly, they approached. As they got closer to the body, it became clear it wasn't a body at all. What the hell? It's just some huge doll or something. A, a doll? Clover did not look terribly comforted. Slowly, she approached the operating table and looked, as intently as possible from as far away as possible, at the thing. Whew. Junpei could see her relax. You're right. It's only a doll. Man, it really scared me. She heaved a great sigh of relief and wiped a few drops of sweat from her forehead. Seven smirked. Eh, well I guess it would have been weird if you actually had any balls. Shut it! Don't you start with me, fatty. Oh, what's this? You want a piece of me short stuff? Yeah, bring it on, you whale. Hey guys, not again, okay? Seriously, knock it off. Hmm. Hmm. Junpei sighed and shook his head. Anyway, looks like he's got something the two of you could stand a little more to have. Talking about a heart. Huh? Oh, dis? Uh, you mean on his chest? Yeah. It was set a little higher than normal for a human body, but from the shape of the organ, there could be no doubt that it was a heart. Why would there be a heart in a doll? I don't think it's a doll. Think maybe it's like a medical mannequin or something? Or maybe it's got more personal uses. Come on, Seven. Seven's grin was more than a little perverted. Yeah, Clover glared at him. Anyway, uh, how about we take a look around this place? Let's go. Okay. Sure thing. I like this escape room. It's pretty much just Junpei having to deal with Clover and Seven throughout the entirety of it, and I love it. Uh, let's begin. So first we have to uh, look over to the left. We have another human mannequin right over here, and we have this table uh, which has this scalpel on it. A scalpel that's not rusty. Seems like it was put here for a reason, huh? You think it's telling us to cut something? Yeah, I do. That's a scalpel. You could probably cut something soft with it. That's a scalpel. What about Seven? He looks more like a scalper. You guys are jerks. Sharp scalpel. I can probably cut things with this. There's not anything that's too tough. Now we move back. Uh, returning to this mannequin from earlier, we can steal one of its organs. An internal organ, specifically a lung. Or no, I guess we can't. Uh, never mind, we'll get back to that later. Uh, we move over to the right, we have a table with some kosher forceps. Are those scissors? They look kind of funny. No, that's probably a pair of kosher forceps. Surgeons use them during operations. They can hold blood vessels shut and keep tissue out of the way. We can use it to pull stuff out of small holes or something like that. Kosher forceps. They can fit into small holes and stuff. Now, with these kosher forceps, we can go ahead and move back here and take this. Get the fake organ, and if you combine that with the scalpel, let's try cutting this organ with a scalpel. We get the organ key. There's a key in this organ. Found a key in an internal organ. Key we found in one of the mannequin's internal organs. Uh, if we move over to the right, all the way here, we have... A fake chest. Ew, that's gross. This is the chest. It's a woman's chest. The heart's gone, but it's pretty hot. Aw, oh, come on. If that kind of thing turns you on, Seven, you're a real creepo. The chest of the medical mannequin. There's a hole in the left side of the chest. I remember Seven being a little perverted during this escape room, but I don't remember him being this perverted. Awesome, it's unlocked. Uh, so within this uh, sort of, I don't know if this is like, a, not really a medicine cabinet, more of like just a room for medicines. We have some bottles over here, blue liquid. 
It looks like there's something inside that bottle. Why don't you try pouring some out onto the cap? Can't see any reason why not. What's that? It's bright blue. Do you think it's alien blood? Ugh. Where the hell did that come from? And what do you think it is, Seven? I don't know. Some sort of special bath soap? Ah, what a boring guess. Bottle with blue liquid in it. That's not the only bottle we have, though. We have red liquid. It looks like there's something inside that bottle. Why don't you try pouring some out onto the cap? Can't see any reason why not. What's that? It's bright red. You think it's blood? No, blood's thicker than that. Then what is it? Beats me. It's a bottle full of red liquid. Uh, to the right, we have a note on top of the table. Iron 1, salt 2, water 3. Carbon dioxide, question mark, ammonia, question mark, eth ethanol, question mark. What do you... What do you think this is a hint for? Maybe it's got something to do with this box? Uh, right here we have a uh, box that has a keypad and it looks like it has three lines indicating that we need three numbers. So, uh, if we start looking at these cabinets... Junpei, there's a bottle of iron powder on the shelf. How do you know it's iron? The label says FE. FE stands for iron, right? Uh, if we look at this one down here... Hey Junpei, you think there are any slugs on this ship? Huh? Well, if there are, I was thinking we could put salt on them. What should we be pointing at? The label states NACL. So, so when you're putting together elements, basically, an element is uh, labeled with two, with typically two letters, uh, with the first one being a capital letter and the second one being lowercase. That way, that when you put together uh, different elements, then you can clearly see which part is which. So, uh, there's one, I think that's one atom for Na, and one atom for Cl. Salt, huh? Do you think Seven will shrivel up if we put him, if we put it on him? Hey, you say something? <laughs> hmm? Hmm? Something stinks. Is it coming from this bottle? It says NH3. So one H, or so one N and three H's. So that's four in total. Well, that of course stinks. It's ammonia. So ammonia is four. Look down here. Oh, good stuff. Let's go for a drink. What are you talking about? I'm talking about that bottle. It says C2H5OH. So two plus five plus one plus one. So that's seven. So that's 9. It's ethanol. Ethanol is 9, am ammonia is 4. It's also known as ethyl alcohol. It's pretty much what booze is. So, you're gonna drink it? Nah, I won't. Might say that's what it is on the label, but it could be anything in there. Look over here. What's this? Looks like a can with a spray nozzle. It says CO2. So one C and uh, three, so one C and two O, so that's three in total. So it's can filled with carbon dioxide. If we look up here, hey Junpei, does the hydrogen monoxide on the shelf? Why don't you just say water? So if we look back here, I wonder, do people mix medicine on this thing? So we saw earlier, of course, Iron is 1, salt is 2, water is 3, uh, and then carbon dioxide, ammonia, and ethanol. So we're gonna take... We'll look at the first line. Maybe question mark represents a number. Yeah, I get that. So if we go ahead and look here, box is locked. It looks like you have to enter passcode on the keypad to open it. I can only enter three numbers. These for enter C is clear. Once you input the number, press E. If you mess up, press C. I'll give it a shot. So if we put in the uh, amounts of atoms in each of those uh, combination, I forget the proper term, but like the combination of elements, uh, we have three, four, and nine, I believe. There we go. Now we get a fake arm. It's the right arm of the body. It's kind of creepy. The right arm of, of the right arm of a medical mannequin. We also have a fake heart. A heart! This thing is super creepy. 
this ain't good for the heart. <laughs> the heart of a medical mannequin. So now we've got pretty much everything we need in here, so let's go back. You think we should go back? Yeah, I think that's probably best. Clover nodded and left. Junpei was about to follow her when he realized that Seven wasn't following suit. Hey, Seven, what's up? Oh, well... He looked up at Junpei distractedly and then back down at the brown bottle he, hel he held cupped in his large hands. What's that? In response, Seven tossed the bottle gently to Junpei. He caught it and twisted it around to read the label. Ethylene diamine tartrate? EDT. It's tartaric ethylene diamine. What kind of medicine is that? It's not medicine. I think it's an industrial strength detergent. Why would they have something like that in here? Well, probably to clean stuff up. Clean what up? Fuck if I know. Still. It looks like it's cleaned my brain up. Junpei looked up from the bottle. You remember something? Seven nodded slowly and spoke. Well, I remember a story about EDT. It happened about 50 years ago. There was this factory somewhere in America making a big old EDT crystals. They were making it to sell as industrial strength cleaner, like I told you before. But... A year after the factory started up, something strange started happening with the crystals they were building. Water molecules started attaching themselves to the EDT crystals. This made them into some sort of mutation of the original crystals called a hydrate. Once the crystal turns into a hydrate, though, it's useless as a cleaner. The factory had to just dump the crystals. As, as a hydrate, they were useless. But it, but it didn't end there. After that day, the same thing started happening in EDT factories everywhere, even ones nowhere near the first American factory. They'd been making crystals the same way with the same materials and the same equipment and environment, but now, all of a sudden, every single crystal they formed turned into a hydrate. In fact, ever since that day, no factory anywhere has been able to make a pure EDT crystal. Even in EDT research done years before, they'd never gotten a hydrate. But after it happened at the first factory, it just spread. It was like, man, how do you say it? You mean like it was infected with a virus or something? Seven shook his head. No, not like that. It spread like wildfire. It started showing up in labs that were completely isolated from the rest of the world. It even started happening to, ED to crystals that were completely sealed up. It doesn't seem like it could have been a result of this stuff coming in contact with us samples. Then... Well, I guess it was some sort of information. Like, uh, the crystals were transmitting this information all across the world somehow. What information? How to make a new crystal. Something had to tell the stuff how to do it, right? Like it just whispered to the EDT in the tank. Hey, if you do this, you can take in water molecules. Come on, man, that's just... I mean, who is this someone anyway? Someone you can't see. Someone who exists all over the world. You mean, like, a god? Or maybe the devil? Seven grinned. His Junpei was trying to figure out what on earth he was going to say next. Clover's shrill voice pierced the room. Hey, what are you two doing over there? Stop wasting time and get over here. Okay, okay, we're coming. Jeez. Seven looked at Junpei. Yeah, so anyway, that's the story. It might be useful someday. Don't forget it. With that cryptic remark, he turned and left the room. Junpei was left behind to ponder what he'd just heard. Information being transmitted invisibly. Could such a thing really happen? Well, thinking about that crap isn't going to help me right now. We need to figure out how to get the hell out of here first. He took a deep breath, tried to clear his mind, and followed after Seven. So we move back here. I think there's also... We should go ahead and move back here. Uh, there's another door right here. It's locked. Uh, we can actually pull out the organ key. The organ key just works on every door in this room, except, of course, for the one that's leading to the escape. Alrighty, it worked. We make our way around this hallway, and we have this drawer. Let's see if... Huh, a piece of paper. What's this? Is this some kind of medical record? New materials added... New material has been added to the file screen. 
Go ahead and check the file. The medical record. We have John at 51.3 kilograms and Lucy at 53.2 kilograms. Medical record found in the preparation room and has records for the two mannequins. There's a male mannequin named John and a female mannequin named Lucy. The record shows each mannequin's total weight and the weight of each of their individual parts. Interesting. We seem to have found one of those mannequins already. Uh, if we move to the right here, we have these three uh, cabinets right here. And they're red, blue, and purple. In our uh, thing right here, we have red, blue, and those make purple. Uh, so if we try to investigate them first... Hmm, it won't open. Looks like it's locked. There's a red plate on it. Do you think that means something? In order to get everything working, we want to go ahead and click on this thing right here. You'll see this also has a red, blue, and purple on it as well as white. If we turn this thing on, it shows white. If we go ahead and pour this red liquid in, it shows red. Hey, it turned red! Forget about that! Didn't you hear that just now? So if we go ahead and move back, and we look at the red thing again, it opens and we get a leg. Let's go ahead and do this uh, once more with the blue liquid and then mix them together. It's blue now. I think I heard another noise. Pour in the red liquid and that'll also unlock the purple door. I get it. You combine the red liquid and the blue liquid to make a purple one. Good job, Junpei. The purple light came on and I heard it unlock. I'm sure it's unlocked. The locker with the purple plate has got to be unlocked. Alright, let's see what happened. We've got another leg. And a fake stomach. I'll actually investigate these. This is a really big nose. That's no nose. It's a stomach. Oh, a stomach. Tap, tap, tap. Tap, tap, tap. Hey, dead ain't a drum, kid. Stomach of a medical mannequin. Let's check each of the legs. This is the left foot of the mannequin. Do you think... Do you think I'm better? What? Do you think my legs are skinnier? I'm just not gonna talk about that. The right foot of the, medica the medical mannequin. Guess it's a woman's foot, but damn. Doesn't look hot at all. Have you got a thing for feet, Seven? No, that's crazy. You sure acting kind of shady. The right foot of a medical mannequin. So now we have all of these body parts, and uh, what we want to do with them is we want to head back to the main room over here. Uh, it's something that I neglected to investigate our first time around, and I probably should have looked at first, is this right over here, this uh, table with the sheet over it. If we check it out... Okay... So, we've collected the six parts of the medical mannequin. So you think these, uh, parts here go to this, um... Oh, you mean Lucy? That's her name, I think. See, it says Lucy right here. Oh yeah, right. Th that table over there says John. Hmm. Well, it doesn't look like John is missing any of his parts. So the ones we've got here must be for Lucy, right? Yeah. Seem seems like it. Well, I say we give Lucy her parts back. Any objections? Nope. Agreed. Alright, let's get started. Combine! Hey, nothing happened. That's odd. Maybe it's the wrong weight? Wait. Yeah, well, you know how there's a scale on the side of the bed? Maybe we need to get the scale to a specific number. How are we gonna do that? I think we're supposed to swap our body parts with John's. Oh! Let's give it a shot. Operation instructions. The screen below displays two medical mannequins. You can switch their body parts by touching the part you want to switch out, and then the part you want to switch in. So, the stuff that you need to switch out is everything except for the heart. There we go. Hey Junpei! I just heard something! It came from John's operating table. We'd better check it out. Let's go ahead and move back. Investigate this closer. Huh? The lid on the scale. Hey, it opened. Oh, I get it. 
It must have opened because we matched John's weight to what's on the chart. And we get the key. This, of course, is the key out of here. There's a mark engraved on this key. I think it's the Jupiter symbol. Key with the Jupiter symbol engraved on it. So now, with the key in hand, let's go ahead and make our way back. I neglected to mention this, but the exit door is right here into this room. Uh, it's this right here. Hey, hold on. Junpei stopped, about to put the key into the doorknob. What's up? Where's Clover? Huh? Junpei turned around. Clover was nowhere to be seen. God damn it, where the hell did she go? Ugh, okay. Uh, just hold on a minute. I'll go get her. Sure thing. Junpei left Seven at the door and headed back to the operating room. He found her, standing next to the operating table. She was staring at the mannequin. Hey, Clover, what's wrong? Come on, let's get out of here. She didn't respond. If she hadn't been standing up and breathing, Junpei might have thought she was dead. What are you doing? Did you want to come back here and say goodbye to John? It wasn't the best joke, but it was something. An attempt to lighten the mood. Clover didn't laugh. She stood stock still and said nothing. Hey, Clover, can you hear me? Perhaps it was something you'd said, or perhaps it was something else. Suddenly her mouth opened, and she whispered in a dry, dead voice. My brother might be dead. Huh? That's why we couldn't find him. If he's dead, I'm going to be next. Suddenly, the operating room felt very, very cold. What are you talking about? What's wrong with you? He gave her a small shake, but she still didn't respond. The silence grew heavier. Let's just get out of here. We've got the key. Let's use it. That cool with you? Clover nodded, almost imperceptibly. Still, Junpei was glad to see she was at least somewhat responsive. He put his hand on her shoulder and guided her to the preparation room. As they arrived at the door, she suddenly stopped. I'm sorry. What was this? Why was she apologizing? Junpei wasn't sure what to make of her. Was she emotionally unstable because her brother had gone missing? I'm really sorry. Just forget everything I told you, okay? Don't worry about it. Really, I mean it. How could anyone pretend not to hear something like that? But something told him this wasn't the right time to press the issue. Junpei gave her the warmest, kindest smile he could manage. Alright. Thank you. Her, sm her smile was weak. It was almost painful to watch. Damn! What the hell took you guys so long? Seven looked up as they walked into the room, clearly irritated. You playing doctor in there or something? Maybe. Jealous? Come on. Seven avoided answering the question. They stood in front of the door, and Junpei took out the Jupiter key. Alright, I'm gonna open it now. That cool? You don't need to keep asking. Just do it, alright? <laughs> Fine then. He slid the key into the keyhole and turned it. He felt it unlock. The door opened with a soft, melancholy creak. Beyond it lay a simple white hallway. There was no fanfare or confetti. Obviously, there was no one there to applaud them. They simply walked through the door. That was it. Alright, let's get going. Hey man, what's up with you? You're so serious, you know? Can't you sound more happy? You know, get a little more excited? Not really. Junpei turned away from Seven and took his first step toward down the simple white hallway. My brother might be dead. I'm going to be next. Clover had told him only a few minutes before that her brother was probably dead, and she was likely to follow him. How could he pretend to be happy after hearing something like that?
And on quite the depressing note, that'll end this episode of 9 Hours, 9 Persons, 9 Doors. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Goodbye!